Schwinger was a, as far as I can tell, kind of very effete, f certainly formal, and and none of which I associate with you. I'm wondering sort of why you chose each other. And well, he was uh, well. First of all, uh, I didn't choose him, but at the when I went to Harvard, I had heard that he was there and that he was somebody important. Well, he was brilliant. Field. I mean, everyone yeah. must have known he was brilliant. But. but then when I got to Harvard, I realized that he was the only person I could sensibly work with. So mm -hmm. what uh, happened, he, it's true that his he had a funny style. His lecture was uh, precise. He had the voice of a radio announcer. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. Everything was in perfect sentences, grammatically perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, the formulas were all clearly written on the board. It, the talk was so designed that he would be at the blackboard nearest the exit door at the end of mm -hmm. the lecture. He would end the lecture and he would simply immediately <laughs> slip out the door and disappear uh, so that his graduate students could not uh, track him down too easily. Uh, he was standoffish, yes. Uh, but let me tell you how I became his student. Sure. Ten or tw I think twelve of us showed up in his office at the same time and said we wanted to be his student. <laughs> uh, rather, we wanted to be his students. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he looked at us and said, uh, "Well, let me give you all a problem." So he gave us a problem, which was to uh, do some calculation, <laughs> which we all we. Mm -hmm. together did then, yeah. <laughs> and then we came back a, a week or two later and said we did the problem and mm -hmm. he explained that we did, we had done it and he still had the problem of what to do with this dozen it, it, students so yeah he gave up and he started assigning problems uh to one after another one to to uh, charlie summerfield who would become a yale professor yeah, he was a colleague of mine when i taught that's you. right another would become uh had another problem in strong interactions marshall baker mm -hmm. he became a professor at uh, uh, University of Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one was uh, uh, Danny Kleitman, who mm -hmm. uh, became a famous mathematician, mathematician. Yeah. as well as my brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and so it went uh, and, until he got to me, which is toward the end of the uh, mm -hmm. of the group of people. And I, apparently he had run out of sensible problems. <laughs> I was just good. Uh, so he <laughs> said to me, uh, Shelley, uh, we were on a first name basis, at least he to me. Yeah. And I said, yes. And he said, well, why don't you, uh, there are certain properties that weak and electromagnetic interactions have in common. And I believe that if you make use of this Yang Mills formalism that had, he hated to refer to other people. Yeah, oh, interesting. This was the one time that he did mm -hmm. in my presence. I uh, use that formalism and make a unified theory of weak and electromagnetic interactions. So that was it. He had the idea he was the first person to imagine such yeah. a, a possibility. Yeah, yeah. And he gave it to me, and I played with it. I had convinced myself that he was right. I mm. found other reasons that one could argue that there should be such a unified theory, but I certainly couldn't make very much progress toward finding it until they finally threw me out of Harvard and gave me a degree. <laughs> but uh, then... Uh, at, a year later or two years later, when I was in Copenhagen as a postdoc, I did. I wrote the one paper which earned my Nobel oh, Prize, course, yeah. which is I found one of the pieces in the puzzle that would uh, enable the theory to emerge.